Hello all my beautiful sisters from those other misters. Welcome back to another Just Doing My Makeup. Today I'm using pretty much a full face of new stuff. Um, not like new new, but new to me. Stuff I haven't used before, so um, some first impression type stuff. I'm going to start with primer before I move on to my eyes. I have the Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. Primer plus moisturizer in one. Well, I've already moisturized today and put on an SPF, so let's do some more. Oh, oh, okay. It's a lot more runny than I expected it to be. I don't know if it's... Oh, yeah, it's got like a soft sort of fresh scent, which is nice. Let's get this on. I'm not really into primers these days. Um... I'm more of a leave it rather than take it kind of girl when it comes to primers. Um, there's only a couple that I really enjoy and most of them are hydrating primers. Um, I find if my base is well hydrated, I don't tend to get as oily, um, which makes sense. Uh, so yeah, something like this is probably more up my alley. It feels like a um, you know, like a thin sort of moisturizing primer. It's not really sticky. It just kind of feels like I've moisturized my skin basically. So I'm going to do my eyes first because I'm using a new or two new palettes that I haven't used before. So I don't know if they're going to offer fallout, offer fallout. Like that's a fucking draw card. Look at our palette. It'll give you fallout. Yay. Um, I don't know if they will have fallout. So um, starting with Bare Minerals Primer. This is the Gen Nude Eyeshadow Primer in the shade Underdressed. So these uh, recently came to Mecca. Um, if I can get it open with my slippery hands. Uh oh. So Doe Foot Applicator. Uh, let's see what it looks like. Should be not a too bad colour match for me. Um, I'm going to pop it on and see what it's like. So this has a pretty typical consistency of an eyeshadow primer, um, kind of like a, you know, it kind of feels like a concealer um, type consistency. It is drying down a little bit. Seems to offer a little bit of coverage over the eyelid, which is nice if you have, you know, discoloration or any sort of, um, you know, lines or veins that you can see on your eyes that um, you you like to cover up so that's um, a positive I will also say it's not like the formula kind of feels like a concealer a thin concealer um, but it doesn't look heavy on the eyelid um, it almost looks like there's not really anything there oh my god it's got sparkle in it yeah there's like micro micro sparkle in there um, I don't think I'll be able to notice it once I've like set the base and put eyeshadow on it's really really minimal but under these lights I can definitely see it for my eyes I'm gonna use two palettes today the one that I'm like really excited to use is the solar look grease pink ladies palette so these were sent to us by the solar look team here it is I'm so excited about this I have like super super nostalgia love for Greece it was one of my favorite movies when I was a kid I had a massive massive crush on John Travolta he was probably my first crush as a young girl um, so I just like this is very special to me I I love this palette it's one that I will like I'll keep it forever doesn't I don't I don't care about anything else the fact that it's a pink ladies palette I will keep it 
Um, so here it is. Now, if you are familiar with me, you probably know I like to have like a shimmer over the lid or a metallic or whatever, sparkle on the lid, and then um, a matte shade in the outer corner and the crease. Now this palette, uh, they all seem to have some shimmer to them. Some are loving, oh my God, I don't even want to touch it. Like I'm going to ruin it. We'll get on with it. Um, some are loving, might just be a satin, um, but all the rest look like they've definitely got some nice sheen to them. So I'm going to use something from here on the lid. And for a matte, I'm going to go into the Makeup Revolution Reloaded Iconic Fever Palette. This will be the first time I've used Makeup Revolution eyeshadows. So let's give it a go. These don't have names on them, so I can't tell you what it is, but starts with this one here. I'm using a Chikahodu GSN 10 brush. All right, so that's going on pretty smooth um, and blending pretty well, which is good. Pigmentation isn't crazy, but I think um, I should wait until I get to some of the darker colors because this is very close to my actual skin tone. So it's, you know, I don't really like to judge these types of shades too harshly because it could simply be that it's basically the same color as my skin. Let's go in with some orange. I'm gonna use a Hakuhodu J5529. This is a tiny little blender. Let's take this dark brown. I'm going to use Hakuhodu S142. Oh, that's a nice color. Okay. It's going on a little bit patchy. So what I might do is take just like a flat shader. It's a J246HS. Um, and I might just like pat it on and then blend. Glam Raider started stocking um, Makeup Revolution products and they have a massive, massive, massive range. Um, and they delivered a box of Makeup Revolution stuff to celebrate the launch. Oh my god, there was so much stuff in the box um, and we took or like Kat took some and I took some home. So I'm really excited to be able to like give it a go and play with it. Um, being a discount brand or not discount brand, that's not a fair thing to say. Being a more affordable brand, it's one that like I've been interested in. Um, Mm. Sorry, I felt like that was blending away into nothing, but I I don't think it was. A bit more product on there. Uh, so being an affordable brand, like it's one that, you know, I've wanted to check out. But analysis, paralysis, when you look at their range, they've got so much stuff. Um, people... Well, I've personally seen a lot of people rave about their eyeshadows. Um, people really enjoy them for the price point, which is a good thing. Um, so, you know, I'm I'm enjoying the whole process of getting to know these eyeshadows. And I just got to say, this dark brown color, I love it. It's gorgeous. The color is Stunning. I'm gonna switch to the Morphe M506 brush. Tiny bit of product, get rid of the majority of it, and just bring it in here where I've got some skipping to try and smooth that out. So if you have used Makeup Revolution, which I'm sure many of you have because it's a very popular brand, um, let me know down in the comments what your favorite products are. Like if you could pick a top three from Makeup Revolution, let me know 
what they are and why. Why do they work for you? Is it an eyeshadow palette and you think the formula is absolutely to die for? Is it a base product that you're obsessed with, like the concealer, which I'm gonna use in this video? Um, let me know. Tell me your feels about the Makeup Revolution faves that you have. Fuck man, that eyeshadow color is just stunning. It is absolutely stunning. The formula is fine. I think, I don't know how much this is. I'm gonna have to look it up. Oh my God, it's $8. It's an $8 palette. So I think there's no denying that the formula is very good for a very affordable palette. Um, the pigmentation is quite good. I'm, I'm happy with it. That can go, come on dude, you're annoying me. All right, I need to get a move on. So let's do this. Yay, I'm so excited. Okay, I'm gonna take a Hakuhodu J144H. It's a tiny little detailer. And I'm gonna go in with Peachy Keen, which is this shade here. This is a really pretty peachy color, like it's actually a peach shade. And it has a beautiful soft gold reflect to it. That is really nice. Formula, like you can see, it's sticking on there. Um, it's got, you know, its own grip, even though the primer is not really sticky, which is good. I'm gonna go in with Electrifying, which is this pinky shade here, there, that one. Um, and I'm gonna use a Smith Cosmetics 253 brush. It's a paddle, like a eyeshadow packing brush with a tapered tip. Let's do it, oh my God. It actually hurts me to use this palette because I don't want to ruin it. That picked up a lot of product. All right, I'm gonna tap it off so I don't wear it. Let's put it on. Fucking what? <laughs> oh my gosh. That is punchy. Oh, I was not expecting that. I was not expecting that. I'm not even gonna dip back in the palette because I was not expecting so much intense pink. Oh, there we go. We can get it a bit softer, but I do want it a little bit more vibrant than that. Damn it. I was going to do like a, a test to use this, um, like put it on dry on one side and then wet on the other um, to show you guys the difference. But I feel like if I use this wet, I'm going to, I'm going to have literally this intense color uh, on my eyes and that's not quite what I was expecting. So um, I don't think it will work with the other shades I'm using. So I think I will use this one um, a little bit softly like I've got it on now and maybe I can go in and put some wet over the, uh, the peach shade to show you guys how it, it changes the eyeshadow. All right, let's try the Peachy Keen shade wet. Uh, back to the little uh, J144H. Just using the Aven uh, spring water to dampen my brush. I'm gonna say this, I actually don't like them wet. I think it, you guys might be able to see, like it, it's increased the pigmentation, um, which is what you go for when you're like using something wet. But it also makes it um, significantly thicker and I have like crepey eyes. So it, it seems to accentuate that crepiness. Now, if you don't have that issue, you probably wouldn't have that as a problem. Um, I think if you're feeling like the pigmentation is not quite what you want, if you want to like ramp it up for major intensity, because I will say when that's on even more intensely, it's 
it's a gorgeous color it's almost got a shift to it it's really subtle and it's like peach gold peach gold it's very pretty i would actually recommend like a glitter glue primer instead um that color is stunning. I really like it. Um, but using it wet on me, if you've got crepey eyelids, um, it might not give you the perfect finish that you're looking for. So that's something that you could keep in mind. Um, I would say a glitter glue would be like the best way to go. That is if you're looking to ramp up the pigmentation. All right. I've just put a little bit of extra pink on there um, to sort of match the intensity of the peach shade so it didn't look so like a soft wash of color and I hate this because I like the guy at solar look and I don't want to say anything that will hurt his feelings I will say I don't think they layer very well um, and I think if you play with the eyeshadow too much they can sort of dust away um so that's a bit of a shame um yeah i think i think this is one that like i'd have to play with to really get to know the formula um so i can understand how it best performs um but with that pink shade i've had a little bit of trouble sort of building it up layering it upon itself um without you know completely wetting the brush and going super intense pink um, and then, you know, blending the edges and still keeping the color adhered to the eye. I'm going to do my base. I don't have anything new. I'm just going to use the Maybelline Superstay 24 hour full coverage foundation. It's just one I'm trying to finish up. Um, I've talked about it before on my channel. If you don't know what I think about it, but you kind of want to, um, it's okay. I like the coverage. I like the finish. Um, I'd say the coverage is, you know, sort of high, medium coverage, um, buildable a little bit. Um, it can start to look a bit heavy uh, on the skin, so that's, you know, something to keep in mind. Uh, I like it for filming. The longevity is pretty good. It doesn't control oil. Um, but it doesn't break down when your oils start to come through like really badly so it'll you know hold up to oils for quite a few hours um i wouldn't say 24 that's whatever um but my major major problem with this foundation and the thing that will prevent me from purchasing it again in the future is the fact that it oxidizes a lot um I don't like that so yeah I could totally be an extra in a zombie movie right now okay I'm gonna conceal so I can set my base and finish off my eyes I'm gonna use the makeup revolution conceal and define concealer I'm pretty sure this is gonna be way too light for me but look I'll use it I'll see how it goes on I can put some more foundation over the top and really cake things up um, who cares? I don't really care. Uh, let's just give it a go. I have the shade C1. Not that you can see it. C1. Um, doe foot applicator. Looks like the, uh, uh, what's it called? Chart. The chart tape. The uh, shape tape from Tarte. Let's get this on. Oh, yeah, very light. It's all right. We can forgive that. We'll just see what the formula's like. Okay, so everyone says that this is a dupe for shape tape. It doesn't smell like shape tape, I can tell you that much. It's kind of like shape tape, but it's kind of like a lot of other, you know, decent coverage concealers um, I don't know it's I feel like it's hard for me to say anything because 
the shade is so off. I'm kind of thinking I've got these um, deepening drops from Ulta 3. I'm thinking I might put a couple in here, give it a good mix up, and I might be able to actually use it. Um, the coverage is, it's all right, but I also think shape tape is just all right. Like I don't think it's the be all end all of concealers. I don't know how it wears. Uh, it's creasing already. Um, but shape tape does that on me as well. So, you know, would I put them in the same basket? Probably. Um, but do I love shape tape? No, it's never been a favorite of mine. It's always just been a, um, like it's okay. It's okay. This is the Linda Holberg Infinity Filter Loose Setting Powder in Medium. For this job, I'm going to use a Haku Hodu brush. This is um, a new one to my collection, along with some of the other brushes I've been using today. But this is the Kokatan uh, Blush Brush in Small, I believe it is. I'm going to try this under the eyes, because I feel like under the eyes I can take a little bit of it, like a darker powder. And if it's super dark, I'm... We're, no, we're gonna fix it. We're gonna fix it. Uh, got to work out the creases because I don't want to set them into my skin. That powder saved the day with the lightness. It's a nice powder. It's a really nice powder. Very finely milled so it hasn't um, like sort of uh, cling or clung in uh, spots. It doesn't look cakey. It looks really nice. That's a lovely powder. I will say I've not been the biggest fan of loose powders lately, but I think that is more to do with the fact that I've used a lot of bad loose powders lately. Um, so it's kind of turned me off. Whereas like the pressed ones that I've been using have been really nice. So I'm kind of like, Ugh, I don't like loose powders anymore. It's not true. I do like loose powders. I've just been using bad ones. Um, so to use this, it's kind of like, oh, that's right. This is what a lovely loose powder is like. Now you can definitely see uh, how much coverage that concealer has offered, which is really not a lot. Um, you can still see my bags, the dark circles that I have. I am going to set the rest of my face, not with Linda Holberg, because Linda Holberg definitely offers some color and I'm afraid that it will deepen up my foundation. I don't want to do that because I'm already pushing it, folks. Look at that. It's not good. Um, okay, I'm going to use, this is new to me. Coty Airspun. So I've never used Coty Airspun before. Um, oh, all right. Oh, it's got a puffer. I didn't, I did not know that. Yep. Oh my God, does anyone else hate peeling these off? I don't know why, it just ugh, makes my skin crawl. I'm gonna use a new brush for uh, setting my base. This is uh, Chikahodu. It is the T2 by Teshu Takamori. Oh, 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 oh. <coughs> really? Is that baby powder? Did I just put baby powder on my face? I think I just put baby powder on my face. All right, there is no going back. Oh, it's really, really heavily scented. What's in here? Oh, good, great. I love it when a powder's first ingredient is talc. Good. I like a sifter that doesn't allow too much product to come out, but when it's like, That's annoying. I feel like I only ever see people use this powder under their eyes. And maybe I understand why, because when it gets too close to your nose, it's just like, Ugh. Okay, something that's handy about this powder 
I feel like you might be able to see it here on my neck. If you noticed earlier where I had like the, you could see how much the foundation had oxidized, um, how it wasn't quite matching my chest. I feel like the powder does offer a little bit of color. This is the Naturally Neutral. Um, and I feel like that has sort of helped to bring down the color of the foundation a little bit, which is very helpful in my case um, because my foundation was a little bit too dark. Uh, so, you know, that's that's a good thing. I Look, I don't think I'm going to be Air Spun's next best friend. I don't mind it, but I don't love it. I think what really turns me off is the scent. It's like, it's intense. It's really, yeah, it's, it's a bit too much for me. Not, not even a bit too much. It's way too much for me. I can't, I can't sugarcoat it. Um, I think on the skin, it's fine. It's not cakey, which is great. Okay. I want to finish up these eyes and I'm going to use a eyeliner from Makeup Revolution. This is the Renaissance Flick. This packaging is adorable. I love it. That is so cute. Please be a good liner. Oh, it's a pen. Alright, so it's a felt tip. The um, the fluid is very black. It's not bleeding, which is great. I was a little bit concerned because it was so wet when I swatched it that it might bleed. Um, the, the tip is not as precise as I would personally like it. It is very sharp, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of people that aren't going to have an issue with this. Um, I feel like, I feel like my biggest problem with it is that it's a felt tip. I actually prefer like a really, really razor sharp like brush tip. Oh God, I'm not touching it. I'm not touching it. It's good enough. It's good enough. Um, all right, you guys can see very black which is great. Um, not completely matte. It's got a little bit of a sheen to it. I don't mind that. Um, it's going to totally come down to personal preference. I need to fix up this inner corner, uh, get it a little bit smoother. And I'm going to do the other one off camera because doing it like this without getting the mirror in the way, so difficult. All right, we have the wings. Okay, <sighs> my feelings about this is I like the pigmentation. It's fantastic. I like the formula. It stays quite wet. Oh, it's got a satisfying little like click in there when you shake it up. Um, my only issue is a felt tip and that is a very personal thing. Um, I find felt tips don't have flexibility like um, a brush tip does. So when you're getting them like over the curves of the eyes, especially if you've got crepey eyelids like me, um, if you have really crepey eyelids, this will drive you insane. If you have mildly crepey eyelids like me, it's gonna take you a while to get that line really nice and crisp and smooth. And I just find a brush tip is better for that because the flexibility of the hairs um, is a little bit more forgiving to the natural curves and lumps and bumps on the eyes. Not that you should have lumps on your eyes, but sometimes the crepiness causes bumpiness. Um, but look, it's on, you can see it's a very, very black. It's very pigmented. I hope it wears well. It is one that I would continue to use. I do enjoy it. Um, over time, I might get a little bit more used to the felt tip applicator um, but yeah I just hope it wears well that's that's it I'm gonna bronze and I'm gonna use a butter bronzer from Physicians Formula um, I don't know which one I'm gonna use I've got Sunkissed and Deep I'm gonna use a Hakuhodu J4003 brush
I need something bigger for bronzing, so I'm going to use a Hakuhodu brush, probably from the G range because it's not numbered. Oh, I'm excited to use this brush. See what it's like. Oh, it's so soft. I quite like this. Um, I see what the hype is. I understand why people like it. I don't mind the scent as well. I do think it's quite strong um, and some people might be a bit turned off by that. Um, but if you like the scent, then like it's a nice product. I have a new blush here. This is the Labiot Momentique Time Blusher. Oh, it's so fucking cute. Look at that. It's a blush and the packaging is a stopwatch. Stop it. How cute. So it's a dual toned blush. Let's give these a swatch. All right. That is the pink blush or the peachy blush. And that's like the highlighty side. Not that you can see them. Um, okay. So I don't think the pigmentation is like intense. Can build it up a little bit. I'm going to say this about blush. I actually hate really pigmented blushes. Like, they just... I... I'm the worst. I dip in and I'm like, swell, 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 put it on and I look like a clown. So, for me, low pigmentation blushes are the winners. Um, it comes with a little brush. Very cute. I'm not going to use it. I am going to use a Linda Holberg 310 brush. So, let's go in there. Look, see, I'm like, <laughs> I can't help myself. I'm the worst. Oh, very soft, which I like. I'm not going to go overboard with this blush ever, which is just what I need from a blush. Nice complimentary shade to the bronzer as well, which looks like hardcore contour, but it's actually, it's very soft. It's just my cheekbones. They're, look, they're, they're jerks. I have the S Effect by Samiria Love Highlighter Palette. So Samiria is a fellow influencer and she created her own highlighting palette. This is what I would consider a traditional highlighting palette with the traditional shades. Um, so I'm going to use this. Hakuhodu brush, not sure of the name. Um, it'll be down in the description box. I am going to take Hopeless Romantic, which is this shade here. I'm going to go into head over heels. I'm going to use another shade. Uh, this is like a gold uh, mid-toned shade and I'm going to use a Hakuhodu brush. Uh, I'm not sure what it's called. It'll be down below. Um, so these are, you know, just traditional highlighters. Traditional in color, traditional in formula. And when I say traditional, I mean more like modern day traditional. Like, you know, it's, there's nothing like insane about these highlighters. They don't have like you know, crazy color shifts or anything like that. They're just, you know, traditional type shades. Um, my personal faves are Hopeless Romantic and um, Head Over Heels because they match my coloring so well and they just sort of blend in to my skin without having like this obvious sort of crazy blob of color. Um, so they're very, very wearable for me, which I really, really like. They do accentuate my texture a little bit, um, but look, pretty much every single highlighter I own does that. So, you know, I just kind of deal with it. It is what it is. If you want to wear a highlighter and you have texture on your cheekbones, it's going to highlight it because that's the nature of a highlighter. I'm just using Benefit Roller Lash on my eyes. This is not new to me. I've been using it for quite a while. I don't mind it. Um, well, I say I don't mind it. I quite like it. Uh, the brush is fantastic. The formula stays sticky on me. Does anyone else find that? Let me know because that's something that is like a major drawback 
and I feel like I feel like every time I saw people talking about this mascara no one like ever mentioned that it's like tacky like the actual mascara stays tacky and the way that I noticed it was applying falsies and I would squeeze the falsie onto like the natural lash and it would always stick and it was never the falsy sticking with glue it was always the mascara sticking to my tweezers so i need to choose a pair of lashes and i'm gonna i'm going through a bag from thousand hour so ages ago thousand hour it was this year at least uh, thousand hour launched a new look for their eyelashes so now they're in boxes and also some new lashes and I'm just trying to find a pair that I'm keen to wear they also have individuals if you like to use individuals they have them in I believe I believe two lengths yes they do I double checked short medium medium long so there you go Lashes I'm going for are from the Natural Collection. This is in the style Boho. I am going to trim these so that they will uh, wear as a demi-lash. I have no new brow products, so I'm just going to use my ColourPop brow stuff in Blondie. Let's do lips. I've got two items here. I have Makeup Revolution Soph X lipstick in the shade Cake. Let's check this out. I hope it smells like cake. Alright, so it's kind of like a rosy nude. It doesn't smell like cake. Missed opportunity. That colour is absolutely stunning. What the hell? Wow, that's really pretty. Kind of, I'd say that's almost a My Lips But Better, but it's a little bit more rosy toned. Beautiful, really like it. Formula is pigmented, but thin. It doesn't feel really thick or heavy on the lips, which I like. I'll be interested to see how that wears. It's got a nice sheen to it. It's a little bit glossy, which kind of makes me feel like I don't need this but I'm going to put it on anyway. This is the NARS uh, Velvet Lip Glide in Roseland. Um, there it is. So this is kind of like a, a thick gloss. I might just take this. Oh my God, they're basically the same color. I thought the NARS would be a nice complimentary like glossy bit. Um, and then I was like, well, Maybe it's a tiny bit darker than the lipstick. I was gonna like try and put it in the outer corner when they go on they look exactly the same but there you go fucking both stunning colors and Pretty much the same um, So if you've got this in your collection or the Sofex in your collection, then you've Pretty much got the same thing. Last thing, last thing. Uh, I'm gonna use a little bit of a finishing spray. This is a fixing spray. It's the Makeup Revolution Hyaluronic Fix Hydrating and Plumping Makeup Fixing Spray. So this will be interesting to see how it goes on and how it makes my makeup wear. Oh, they don't smell good. Yeah, it they smell um, they smell like shoes. It looks fine on the skin. It's not like splotchy or anything like that, which is really good. Um, it's just kind of giving the skin a nice, nice glow, which is nice. I like that. I'll be interested to see how it wears throughout the day, whether it actually does offer any sort of longevity or if it's just just a spray there we have it an almost full face of first impressions I feel like a lot of the things that I used in this video I'm kind of like I need to play with this more um, sometimes you have those days where you use new stuff and you're just like yes and then you're like 
not bad, but it's not blowing my mind. Um, maybe my expectations were higher than they should have been. That's usually what, you know, that's usually what makes me sort of a little bit iffy about products. Um, if there's any hype behind them that I'm aware of, I'm like, yeah, majorly critical. So maybe that's my problem and not the problem of the makeup. Uh, definitely my problem. I need to use them more. Um, so I will. I'll use them throughout the month and hopefully, um, you know, talk about them in my end of month recap. If you have used anything in this video and you have particular feelings about them, definitely let me know down in the comments. Um, yeah, I feel like, I feel like that's all we can do. We can talk about them. I feel like I'm going to get blasted over the Coty air spun thing. I feel like that's a cult product that everyone loves and adores. Um, and I can't get past that smell. It's not good. It's not good. Anyway, guys, um, I'm going to go. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Bye.